of his strong horses, at the rushing of his chariots, and at the rumbling of his wheels, the fathers shall not look back to their children for feebleness of hands. Do you understand what that last phrase means? It means that a daddy, because he is so fearful, would not even look back to his son to see if he's being perishing, if he's about to be killed, because of the fear that has gripped his own heart. He is running, and he can't even look back to see whether his son is following or gaining or losing ground. He is so feeble in his hands. He is so fearful. That's the judgment God said, I will bring upon this nation, this nation that often had troubled Israel, this nation filled with idolatry and false gods. The next judgment is against Moab. This nation came from Abraham's nephew, Lot. Uh, you may remember the story as, as Lot was fleeing Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, it, it also is going to be judged for its pride. You look at chapter 48 as you move into there. And again, we're not reading every verse. If you read every verse, it would be a lot of the same, a lot of similar words of destruction and judgment. All right, so chapter 48 there in verse 4, it says, Moab is destroyed. Her little ones have caused a cry to be heard. Chapter 48 and verse 6, flee, save your lives, and be like the heath in the wilderness. For because thou hast trusted in thy works and in thy treasures, thou shalt also be taken. And Chemosh, that is their god, shall go forth into captivity with his priests and his princes together. And the spoiler shall come upon every city, and no city shall escape. The valley also shall perish, and the plain shall be destroyed as the Lord hath spoken. If you jump down to verse 29 of the same chapter, we have heard of the pride of Moab. He is exceeding proud. His loftiness and his arrogancy and his pride and the haughtiness of his heart. For I know his wrath, saith the Lord, but it shall not be so. His lies shall not so affect it. And then the final verses for Moab, verse 43. It says, Fear and the pit and the snare shall be upon the inhabitant of Moab, saith the Lord. He that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that getteth up out of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For I will bring upon it, even upon Moab, the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. In other words, he said that they won't escape. If they get out of the pit, the snare is going to take them. There's, there's no escape for them. Judgment is certain. The next nation is Ammon. If you look at Jeremiah 49, look at verse 1. Concerning the Ammonites, thus saith the Lord, Hath Israel no sons? Hath he no heir? Why then doth their king inherit Gad? This was the city that God had given to the people of Gad, and yet the Ammonites are the ones who actually were reigning and ruling there. It says, And in his people, the Ammonites, dwell in his cities, in, in God's people's cities. Why is that? Verse number 5, God says, Behold, I will bring a fear upon thee, saith the Lord God of hosts, from all those that be about thee. And ye shall be driven out every man right forth, that is, you will be driven out immediately, and none shall gather up him that wandereth. You look at the judgment for Edom in chapter 49 as it continues. Look at verse 15. This is another nation. This was a sister nation to Moab, or I'm sorry, rather to Esau of Jacob's brother, a sister nation of Israel. And verses 15 through 17, it says, For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen and despised among men. Thy terribleness, in verse 16, hath deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the heights of the hills, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Also Edom, in verse 17, shall be a desolation. And so, very clearly, God is saying destruction will come upon Edom. If you were to study the book of Obadiah, the wording from Jeremiah is almost identical. It's almost the exact same wording that is used. If you look at, he goes on to judge Syria. We are halfway through. That is the sixth nation that God pronounces judgment upon. Look at verse 24, chapter 49 and verse 24. Damascus, that is the capital of Syria, is waxed feeble and turneth herself to flee, and fear hath seized on her, anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not left in the city of my joy? It was a beautiful city. In antiquity, it was described as a beautiful city among all, of all those that beheld it. And yet here, even the prophet says, how is that city of praise not left? It will be destroyed. The judgment against the Arabian dwellers, the nomadic uh, dwellers of Arabia, chapter 49 and verse 28. 
It says in verse 28 there, Concerning Kedar and concerning the kingdoms of Hazor, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, shall smite, thus saith the Lord, Arise ye, go up to Kedar, and spoil the men of the east. Their tents and their flocks shall they take away. They shall take to themselves their curtains and all their vessels and their camels, and fear, and they shall cry unto them, Fear is on every side. The final judgment there now is upon Elam. If you look at chapter 49, look at verse number 34. It says, The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and will scatter them toward all those winds, and there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Edom of Elam should not come. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord. And I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. The final judgment that God levies is against Babylon. And in chapter 50 and in chapter 51, God spends 110 verses, very similar to everything we've already read, of saying just over and over, Babylon is going to be destroyed. Babylon at that time was the superpower of the day. And God spends the majority of his time pronouncing a judgment upon them. We're going to just read these verses and then we'll make our application. In Jeremiah 51, starting in verse number 1, if you look at 51 in verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind, and will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her, and shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Verse number 7. This is very similar wording to what we see in Revelation. It says, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. Two more sets of verses. Verse number 24, this 51st chapter, it says, And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. In chapter 51 and verse 60, as you get to the end, this is God's final pronouncement. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, When thou comest to Babylon, and shalt see, and shalt read all these words, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of the reading of this book, thou shalt bind a stone to it, that is, you'll tie a stone to this book that's been written, all these judgments, and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah, and you get to the end of all of that, and I know that was a lot of scripture, and that was a lot of heavy scripture. You get to the end of all of that, and you're like, who did God not pronounce judgment on? Was there anybody left? You know, I mean, he, he was hitting everybody. He hit 10 different nations. He started with Egypt. He moved to the Philistines, to Moab, Ammon, Edom, Syria, Arabia, Elam, and Babylon, and you get to the end of that, and that, I mean, that is some heavy stuff. And we didn't even read half of the verses. We probably didn't even read a tenth of all the verses. And so God spends six chapters of his Bible, of what he wants us to know about himself, and he spends six chapters of what you just heard ten times over. That is a lot of judgment. That is a lot of stretching forth his hand against these nations that defied him and that went against him. But ultimately, as we read this, and I hope that it almost got to the point of being uncomfortable, of hearing how much judgment he was pronouncing and everything that he was saying, because it all sounded the same after a while. I'm going to judge you. You're not going to have a chance to flee. You're going to be destroyed. 
Destruction is coming. There's no hope. It's all over. It's all bad. It's all bad.